So welcome back guys. Today I'm gonna talk with you about a topic that is very very important for every Yoshimitsu player that is above average that plays Yoshimitsu to a higher extent and for a longer period. Today we're gonna break down how we are working against turtles. Every uh, Yoshimitsu player that spent more time than like half a year with the character or is interested in him will find out that with Yoshimitsu, people that are mashing are not our problem. Um, online players in general are not problematic to deal with, but what do we do when we are playing a character that has decent evasion and doesn't press buttons? Um, it is very very difficult for Yoshimitsu to break, down, uh, to break down people that play like this. What is going for us? I am always teaching you guys to play safe and keep out but that's only works if you have the life lead or if the opponent is giving you whiffs if he doesn't whiff uh, and first and foremost before you can utilize mad stance to his full potential you have to get the life lead and the problem with Yoshimitsu he does have some decent mids where you're not taking too big risks but if the opponent has stiff movement and doesn't do a lot then it is very very difficult because we lack lows we do don't have a throw mix up the setups for our throws are very very telegraphed if we don't just run up and do them in the neutral and if we do there is just no good mix up for us so how do we open them up <clears throat> with yoshimitsu is very very important i think his biggest weakness in my opinion is the only low that you can do with Yoshimitsu in a range where you're comfortable in my opinion my range is around 2.8 where I'm very comfortable at the tip of forward forward 1 plus two, uh, at forward, the tip of forward 1 plus 2 sorry to whiff punish or to dash in with a down forward 1 is where I feel most comfortable uh, and most of my damage I get uh, out of creating situations where sidestep 1 works very well uh, sidestep 1 overall is the move that I dedicate the most of my my time and matches too because i really think it's the backbone of of his safe offense and counter hit fishing and of course his down four two those are the two moves that i use very very frequently to create damage of course most characters use their down four two but for yoshi it's really essential it's essential and you really have to get the timing down but that only works if the opponent is giving it to us if he has good movement you're not gonna score a lot of forward one plus twos catching him backdashing incorrectly or you're not gonna create a lot of punishing attempts with down for two and doing it in the neutral fishing for income can pay out a lot but against when you don't have the life lead and the opponent knows that there is no need to go in um, He's just gonna stay in his range and try to create some whiffs. Remember, this is really if you play against opponents that know the character very well. And then what comes in mind, okay, maybe I rely on this. But the problem is if you're not scoring a counter hit, this heavily, heavily favors him. Heavily. Because if he... But you kind of need to use it, right? So what I do is I do a lot of down back four. Most people that have the life lead, if you approach them, however, will defend with jabs because the risk reward is in their favor. Uh, when, when that happens, you, that's only my opinion. Of course you don't have to. You can also work a lot with while standing too. For instance, like being in your range, dashing up and then predicting jabs, ducking and while standing too. You can do that very quick without risking getting launched by a mid if you do it flawless, right? And then you create actually a very good situation with plus seven and back turn in his face. That is a good situation where back turn down one isn't steppable and the back turn hop kick is very annoying to deal with. But um, this also requires him to do something when he doesn't have to. So if he just stands there, you really have to abuse down back four and down four. I know down four is minus 15 and you have to keep this in mind, but it's the same, I showed you uh, a video about up for 2 And for instance in this matchup up for 2 is actually decent because Asuka's while standing punishment starts at 18 frames and is launch punishable. So if you space this correctly for instance, which I will make a video on, um, 
and then you can punish, uh, punish the launching attempt. But back to the topic. How do we open them up? If you space down four a lot, you can annoy them uh, even though you're not creating a lot for you here because it's very low damage. It's more about the mental thing. Very, very close to uh, Armor King's down four. Uh, the damage is very, uh, very small, but you're, uh, the problem is with this move, in my opinion, is you're crouching. That means you can only step in the foreground. And if the opponent knows that, sidestep one is not as a good option as, as uh, usually is. But keep in mind, if you're uh, at this range, while standing two and while standing one will still cover stepping from the opponent and uh, annoy them. Even though you're minus two and you have flash. Against those opponents, what I teach you doesn't apply in the same sense. And we're really talking about the highest level of plays. Here, you really have to work with Flash. And you have to sparingly and always in mind that you're taking a big risk, but you kind of have to use it. Of course, Wild Standing 3, Wild Standing 2, Wild Standing 1 are all decent moves. The tracking is not to be underestimated. Ford 1 plus 2, CD 1 at max range. You have good tools. But if the opponent is very defensive, down back 4, down 4, and down 4, 3, 3, I know it's shitty, are tools that you have to use. One tool that I recently started using that I never used before is 2 down 3, actually. Not only as a punish, but in the neutral. Because 2 down 1 actually makes it that it's kind of a, kind of a mix-up. And people, because I use a lot of 2 1, I love this move, uh, people are actually not ducking it. You're minus one, so don't fool yourself. You, of course, like Yoshimitsu always, is in minus frames. And that's really the key point. A good Yoshimitsu player can play with minus frames without every time taking huge risk with Kicho Paris and Flash. But as I told you before, I think NSS is actually better against those ki kind of opponents. Because even though full crouch down for free is very, very risky, it just opens the opponent up as your mids are gonna get way more powerful. But if you, the kind of player who wants to play very compact, then your goal is to get the life lead as early as possible and then play the keypad game. Because what Yoshimitsu excels at is range punishment. Range punishment and keep out tools are super good for this character. And if you want to have a quick life lead, you have to chip the, uh, at the opponent with small annoying lows and then either force him for one counter hit, which will decide the pace of the match because, for instance, if he reads this, then you are way behind. But if you can score the counter hit, your life lead is big enough to go full keep out mode. What in, uh, if you uh, don't have the keep out, uh, don't have the life lead, what I focus on a lot is actually Dragonfly in any capacity. If I'm on Oki, if I knock them down, I just straight up run up and do Dragonfly. If the opponent is very defensive, I do something like back 1-1 one, one Dragonfly on block. Um, sometimes even in the neutral, when I dash up like this, I go into Dragonfly. This is versus the kind of opponent who's jab heavy to defend themselves, it's not that useful. I'm gonna uh, not deny that, but <clears throat> there is one option that is very overlooked by a lot of players and it is very, very annoying. If you go into Dragonfly and you immediately, I really mean immediately, for instance, you hit uh, a 1-1, one, one. Uh, a 2-2 two, two is better, and you go into Dragonfly, he can actually react to that offline. and. Because Dragonfly is such a good offensive stance with all his tools, even good players that have the life lead don't want to deal with this because ducking is not a good idea. And stepping, if you dash forward twice, is not a good idea as well. Don't fool yourself, you're not gonna realign 100%, but if you dash forward and uh, you can use a homing move, but in my experience, if I'm plus, and I'm dashing forward once and I do four, it tracks them down. Not all the time, but it's, it does. And of course you can incorporate this, which puts you in plus seven on block and again in their face. But if people are jab happy, I do a punish, or sometimes I'm not lying to you, I just do one on block, do this and then do down back immediately. If you do it uh, fast enough, you can duck the jab that they throw out. I know this sounds super stupid 
and very saturation but i will showcase you i do this a lot and if you ducked don't and they did nothing don't go for a sweep go for nothing just reset into neutral you saw he respected dragonfly maybe at plus one and that's a good sign that's a good sign if he press jabs then you have another mind game because you can duck flash here very easily if he does a 1-1 one, one, for instance or 1-2 and you will launch it if he press something that is high you can even go for shit side soul sweep i don't say that that's your first option i mean that you create a mind game by only accessing the stance and then immediately canceling it to get a read on the opponent's habit on defense because this is on the highest level the best pressuring tool i can think of crouching isn't it really isn't anymore because of um of the really easy avoided uh, the e really easy options that you have to avoid the sword sweep of the risk reward that is in the opponent's favor of full crouch down for four in no sort stance that changes in my opinion in no sort stance uh, since I lost Dragonfly, I threaten all the time with full crouch. Even though I only do full crouch down for free like maybe once a match against some opponents, actually six times a match. But the, even if I go more for wild standing two, wild standing one, or ju just crouching back into neutral, I am threatening with this and I will want to challenge him to press buttons. The goal with Dragonfly in his face is him to feel uncomfortable and pressing buttons because if you don't get him to press buttons you're gonna have a very very hard time with Yoshimitsu a good opponent knows that even if Yoshimitsu is on minus his tools are more dangerous if you play into those minus frames than when you're just defending yourself when you have a solid defense Yoshimitsu becomes a very very hard character to to beat you down for instance, I even think that Panda is a better character against a turtley opponent than Yoshimitsu is. Because it's Rai running 1 plus 2, if you do a point blank and you can get your opponent away from stepping or down back 2, are actually a decent option at any level or his, his hunting stance. Yoshimitsu's only decent option against a very turtley opponent, in my opinion, is Dragonfly. And after every time when I, <clears throat> for instance, counter hit the down for one i enter dragonfly like this or manually every time when i do this against a good opponent i enter dragonfly i know it's only plus four and i know they can step block step duck they can do something but then i just cancel the stance i want them to see hey i'm vulnerable and if you accept me being in your face like that i will get options that are very threatening like an unbreakable grab a very very good uh, plus low that is a counter hit launcher or this fall that leads to huge damage if you guess wrong and guessing against dragonfly is very annoying if you incorporate the fall most of the time because even if they're blocking blocking it nothing happens the situation afterwards is still dangerous if they're reacting wrong and if you do it at max range the distance is, is also so good and you have to keep in mind like if you do a 2-2 uh, you are like this and if you dragonfly and they backdash you're gonna be like this so if they block the four max range nothing happened if you hit the four you're still not in range to apply pressure afterwards even though i think you're plus 12 but you scored the damage you annoyed them you you annoyed them and at plus 14 you can throw out the four one plus two afterwards even on max range so <clears throat> There is one other way to get the opponent pressing buttons, but that one is very, very risky and needs you to be very, very good with wild standing two, wild standing one, and wild standing three, in my, opponent, uh, in my opinion. He is known for his unblockables, and this shit has range, like I showed you in many videos, like crazy. The problem is that one step will kill you. You can kind of see this, I mean, if you do the... Um, if you do the silent one, it's it's better, right? The the um, up up back one. If you can do this like uh, Omen Gun, uh, Omen Thunder Godfist, this is actually better, right? But still, good opponents will sidestep that. I mean, it has this with some tracking, but that's not the point. To set this up, even on good players, good players sometimes will freeze up and eat this. Even in Korea, I musician hits people with this. How does he do it? 
because before he either fucked their brain with a lot of gimmicks and he only uses this most of the time when there is a lot of pressure on the opponent. For instance, he even did it against uh, Malgu because it was a tournament match and he really fucked with his brain and Malgu was just like, he's not gonna do it. So, um, this unblockable is actually very annoying due to the rage. But what you have to do, or how I like to use it first, you have to incorporate this cancel for it. Uh, because this is actually very quick. On counter, it gives the launch, which is not the goal. The goal is for him to not press buttons if he sees this. Because this is 50 frames. He can press buttons. You want him to feel on the defensive. That is the first step. A good opponent will just sidestep. And what I like about this unblockable, you can do it from crouch. So because of the up back input, you can even do the silent uh, input from crouch if you do it correctly. So what I like to do is I like on plus frames or sometimes in the neutral, harass them with while standing two and while standing one. I always come back to those <laughs> because this will keep them from stepping the other way that you could do this is with this, but this is too risky. If you do it like this, they won't have stepping in their mind as their first defensive option when you're in crouch at plus. Because they, they got hit by so many of those two that they're feeling, okay, backdashing is the way safer and better option. And against backdashing, this unblockable becomes super annoying. And if they backdash twice, they're out of range to interrupt you, but you're still in range to hit them, if that makes sense. But what you have to get out of their brain is the ability, okay, I'm minus four here and he's in crouch, I will just sidestep block to, uh, to fuzzy the up 4-4, four four, to, to maybe sometimes block the full crouch down for, for, for killing him and to avoid the dangerous options. For that, you just harass them with this shit. This is very low risk and he cannot step anymore. After a certain time in his brain, when he got hit by this twice, he's like, fuck that shit. I'm just gonna backdash block this shit. And then is where you stop using this. And when you harassed him, my, uh, even from full crouch with this on, um, for instance, let's say you hit this and you go in the transition, you're plus four and you just harass him with this. Don't step, stand still, respect me, respect me. And then there comes the time where he's like, okay, I'm not gonna fucking respect him anymore. I will jab check him down for one. And then is the time where flash is available, where you just know you don't press buttons against me. I don't give a shit if I'm minus four or minus five. I will interrupt you every freaking time. And then he's like, okay, he's only getting damaged because I'm dumb and pressing into it. So what I will do, I will play the clock and play defensive and then is the time where you are, fuck you, fuck you. Does this all what I told you, told you apply to rank battle and mighty ruler? No, 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 no. Those people, oh, minus five, I, I, am, I am Oscar. What can I do? What can I do? I, I have to defend myself. Oh yeah, can, can. Well, let's do can, can. Oh, 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 he blocked it. Oh, back free, back free. Yeah, back free is a good keep out tool. I don't give a shit if it's minus 20 on width, uh, minus 25. Oh, what? Yoshimitsu has a perfect option select for everything? I don't care. You don't know if Bukini is good. Fuck you, fuck you. I will still do it. Those kind of people, forget it. Against those kind of people, important is for you to be defensive. If you know wh how punishable shit is and, and how to defend against shit, then an uh, Oscar player like this will beat you one match maybe because you are like, what is he doing? Why is he doing dumb shit? But after that, you're like, oh, okay, he's not doing dumb shit. I will, I will deal with this appropriate. I will kill him for it and do this. And oh my God, I just got fucked. <laughs> ah, Yoshi doesn't have a dick jab. Okay, I will do down four. <laughs> I'm a scrub, man. I hope you get the point or you got the point by now. This is only against opponents who know Yoshimitsu. Against other opponents, just do your dumb shit. I know this has been a long one. Take care, guys.